So what I'm going to share with you today, if I can find my clicker, um, I want to talk about the state of digital in construction. And then I want to dive into how PCL is changing that from our perspective and the things that we're doing digitally, our, our digital transformation. I'm going to talk briefly about how we've moved from descriptive to predictive analytics and why I don't like that. And it seems like a strange comment to make when there's ML people in the room. But I'll, I'll elaborate on that. Um, I'm also going to talk about two use cases where we have definitely applied AI and ML, mostly ML, in um, our safety domain and in pouring concrete um, uh, at a project in Toronto. I'm going to talk about job site insights. That's our IoT platform. You'll notice the TM after that. We've trademarked that. Um, and we actually sell it. So I've got the sales brochures later on if you're interested. <laughs> And then I want to talk, as Alex alluded to, uh, our technology partnerships and why Tom is here as well today presenting with us. So who's PCL? Anybody heard of PCL? Oh, there's lots of hands. Of course we have. Best construction company in the world. Um, we are the largest general contractor in Canada, the seventh largest in the United States. We're headquartered in Edmonton. That's where I'm from, incidentally. Don't throw stuff. I'm not an Oilers fan. Uh, we, you can see the stats there for yourself. We do about $9 billion a year in volume at any time, 700 projects ranging in size, as you can see there. Um, we operate in the buildings market, the civil market, and heavy industrial. Those are our primary areas of operation. And we are 100% employee owned. I'm a shareholder. Alex is a shareholder. Um, any other PCLers in the room are very likely shareholders. And in Calgary, and I've got to refer to my notes here because I'm not from Calgary, but some things I'd like to draw your attention to is we've been here in Calgary, PCL's been here since 1947, and our projects that you're most likely familiar with are the Calgary Tower, an iconic structure, uh, the Calgary City Centre, and the one on the right there is the Cancer Centre here in Calgary, currently under construction. I had, an I, did, I had an opportunity to visit it today, but I was unable to do so. So I'm sure that many of you have seen that to live in the area, perhaps. So, how many people think they're digital or their organization is digital? How many people are working in or their organization is using AI and ML at scale? A few hands. How many people are aspiring to be AL or AI, pardon me? Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few. How many people have never heard the term and their organization is not really pursuing it? Everybody keeps their hands down. <laughs> so this guy, we are a big Microsoft customer, uh, our AI platform and our ML platform reside primarily on Microsoft technology. Um, I actually really believe this statement. Every organization is a digital organization. And if you're not, you're going to be out of business. Kodak comes to mind. Fortune 500 companies that are no longer Fortune 500 companies because they're gone. And I think uh, construction, although um, pursuing these things, is still a laggard. According to McKinsey, who I follow religiously, I really like their work, um, construction digitally is um, just a little ahead of farming. <laughs> That's not good. And in AI, uh, construction is also a laggard. Another McKinsey study, um, I forget the axes here, but the annual spend on AI for the respondents in the construction industry was about 1% annual increase. And roughly 15% of those respondents in the construction industry are adopting AI and ML at scale. That sucks too. That's not really great when you think about it. Uh, compared to industries like banking, fintech, automotive, self-driving vehicles, um, that's a, that's, we're a lagger, without a doubt. 
And that, that's where our digital transformation at PCL really began. Before I move on to that, I wanted to give you a sense um, on another, I think this is McKinsey as well, this spider graph here, which is almost nonsensical, what I take out of it is the areas connected by thicker lines indicate the number of technology companies operating in those domains. And you will see over to the right, the red boxes I've drawn, uh, the lines are rather thin for machine learning and for digital twins. It's really faint in the top right corner. That word there, the domain is digital twin. So I'm gonna talk today about what we're doing at PCL with AI and ML and our IoT platform known as JobSite Insights, also for sale. <laughs> so those thin lines, who, who's playing in that area? What, what organizations and what software and technology companies are there? Um, I will leave Struction Site alone because Tom is here to tell us the great things that Struction Site does and that PCL uses. The other things that we're looking at or have looked at, and this is by no means indicative that PCL uses all of these. We've examined some of these on job sites, and I'm gonna run through them rather quickly. Um, end plan in the scheduling area um, can ingest hundreds and hundreds of thousands of historical project schedules, and basically the ML algorithms tell you what you did wrong and what you should do on your next schedule. Alice is another one, they're rather unique. They do the same thing. They can, they can compare millions of schedule options in about, I've seen the demo, 15 or 20 seconds, depending on your processing power, and every time it runs through that schedule, it actually visually draws the construction of the building. You'll actually see a building arise in three dimensions. And again, they're an optimization engine. Brick is a, is a data science platform for construction. It's the only thing I can describe it. Their claim to fame is they do the data, they do the analytics, they do the prediction. Uh, they even threw, uh, uh, what's the team's escaping me at the moment? Um, I'll come back to it. Uh, Structure site, we'll see. Altus Group and Building Radar at the top. Um, they're, they're an analytics company for, construct, for constructors in real estate. They provide data and their analytics, they use AI and ML algorithms to, in, to indicate where construction companies should build next. Get ahead of the curve, get the job before the next GC gets that job. Uh, Smart Vid's an interesting one on the safety front, and I'm gonna talk about how we have a better product, not for sale, um, but I firmly believe we have a competitive product that we built in-house, and that's the use of video analytics. So computer vision and video analytics applied to the health and safety domain within construction. Doxel is a really cool one. Has anybody seen a Doxel robot? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. You get this god-awful expensive robot, crawl the job site, and it'll tell you your progressing, your schedule, your quality, also can be used for health and safety. And again, it's the application of video analytics and computer vision um, to monitor the progressing on your job sites. Indus AI is another one, uh, video analytics. They play in the safety domain the progressing domain, the quality domain, again, all applying AI and ML analytics to get ahead of those domains that they operate within. And Autodesk, everybody knows Autodesk, I presume. AI and ML is finding its way into all of their products. And they've hired a head of data science, they have a large data science team, and you're seeing more and more their applications are using AI and ML under the covers. Any questions so far? So, there is the PCL vision statement. And I've highlighted the word leadership because we are construction leaders, but we're also aspiring to be technology leaders. And despite the doom and gloom of those previous slides saying that construction is an AI laggard and a digital laggard, another survey, this one from KPMG speaks to the fact that of the top 20% technology advanced companies in construction, that percentage up there believe that AI and ML will be commonplace in five years. That, that gives me hope, for my team hope, and certainly we're not gonna do that sitting still. We're, we have to drive those changes within the industry. 
And that's really what we aspire to do. And I'm really going to share with you today some of the stories that we've done and how, how, we th how PCL is a digital leader as, in addition to being a construction leader. So our digital transformation. Everybody likes that word. Everybody's transformative. Everybody's digital. And ours, our story began five years ago when PCL hired my boss, PCL's first ever CIO, Mark Bryant. And we began with the top arrows. I think that's green. I'm color, completely colorblind. So my marketing guys put that together for me. Thank you, marketing. Um, we really began with a move to cloud, um, a move to mobility, making our job forces mobile. iPhones, iPads, mobile devices that pervades the rest of society and it's found its way into construction in some cases. Uh, data and analytics, the foundation of analytics is data. That's the team I run, our business data optimization team. Um, we've really kicked the gears up on using our data. Construction collects a lot of data. Terabytes and terabytes and terabytes. Interesting statistic, uh, PCL puts a lot of stuff, a lot of data into Azure Blob Storage. We are the largest consumer of Blob Storage uh, in the Azure ecosystem. We put everything up there and we don't use half of it. A lot of it's kept for regulatory purposes, legal purposes, uh, proof that you've done things or not done things are important. Uh, but we don't use a lot of it and we need to use more of it. The bottom arrows, I think that's a blue, um, is really this next phase of our digital transformation. Virtual construction, 5D modeling, uh, augmented reality. If you guys walking around with those HoloLens on, well, that's not my area. I want to talk about uh, the AI and ML and the IoT. Also known as monetize the IoT services. We're for sale. Um, that's all I'm going to say on that one. <laughs> but really, um, you know, what have, we, what have we done with AI and ML? I've got two interesting use cases behind that. Um, oh, yeah, some more bragging. I get to do some bragging here. Uh, in 2018, PCL uh, submitted uh, for an award of PwC's V2R, Vision to Reality Awards, that awards digital transformation in a number of categories. And PCL in 2018 won the award for the reinventor category, reinventing construction with digital technology. And part of our submission was based on our AI and ML work, as long as our IoT work, Internet of Things work with the JSI platform. There's my ugly mug there. Uh, the, the shortest guy there is our CIO. And the two gentlemen on the uh, other side of, on the outside are uh, BT managers, my peers in the organization. So we're, we're really proud about that award. Uh, a lot of work went into it, and it really shows the, the industry recognition that the digitization of construction is beginning to receive. So before I get into the AIML, has anybody seen a diagram like this? Actually, now's the time for another question. How many people are involved in business intelligence and reporting in their organizations? Any BI gurus? Oh, there's a few hands waving. That's good. That's where we came from. That's where we started with descriptive analytics. That is the rear view mirror, what, you, what, what has happened. And the, these, these graphs are always described in terms of sophistication. As you move analytic sophistication, and as you move up, it's of more value. And I said earlier, I, I dispute that because we always do descriptive analytics, the rear view mirror stuff, what happened. And we're starting to move into, as you move up these curves, and you go up the axes, you get more sophisticated analytics, the prescriptive stuff, the descriptive stuff. What's going to happen? And if I know what's going to happen, what's the best outcome I can achieve given my prediction of what will happen? And all the, all the Gartners of the world and the McKinsey's of the world, everybody says you've got to be moving up and to the right. I really disagree with that. Descriptive analytics will be here forever, and they provide tremendous value. That being said, we do a ton of it. So how many Power BI users in the room? Anybody using Azure Power BI, Microsoft Power BI, or other analytics tools? That's our weapon of choice. Um, and is, it is pervasive in our company. We have over 3,500, I believe, active Power BI users. And we've deployed it, my group's deployed it 
across all of these domains, from planning to safety. Safety is a big one, by the way. I'll talk about that. Um, a really interesting one is our costing and estimating. Our estimators go to clients with an iPad and present their bids and their estimates using Power BI. So we bring to life the data behind the bids, summarize it, and we do that visually. Interactive visualizations where we can click on, for example, the formwork and have a discussion with the owner about why the formwork is X number of dollars. Or conversely, if they want a different type of finish or structural work, we can illustrate those costs visually costs visually and immediately in Power BI. So descriptive analytics, uh, as I said, pervasive, but it is rear view mirror looking. It's what's happened. And we, of course, we've got a ton of data, as many of you do, I'm sure, in your organizations. And we don't know what to do with a lot of it, but we're starting to render it and expose it through analytics. Oh, some more bragging. Um, in 2017, PCL didn't have analytics. We didn't have a BI program. And in 30 days, uh, my team rendered analytics for a large US project measured in the billions of dollars that uniquely brought PCL's data together with the owner's data and the joint venture partner's data. And that was tremendously challenging given that construction companies, generally speaking, don't share their data. It's the holy grail. We don't like to give that away. It's a competitive advantage. So that was a unique project, and we delivered that in 30 days. And for that, um, we received an award from the Information Technology Association of Canada, large, pro large private sector. OK, enough bragging. Uh, I'm going to describe two use cases to you um, that involve computer vision and the application of machine learning. And I don't have my data science team here, so any technical questions, I'm going to fake my way through a lot of it and uh, share with you what we've done and describe to you what we've done. And if you, if you are interested in learning more about the science behind this, uh, my guys are more than happy to talk to anybody that has that curiosity. What did we do here? Well. Hazard inspections on a job site at PCL were traditionally and are still traditionally performed with pen and paper. A guy <laughs> walks around, observes a hazard, fills out 50 forms, and inevitably takes a picture with their phone. And why do, how do they use that data? Well, they go back to the trailer three days later, if they remember it all. They just look at the picture and they go, geez, I got to fill out that hazard inspection. So our Vice President of Health and Safety said to me, why don't we use the pictures? People are taking pictures on the phone. The phone geolocates the picture. So we've got two vital pieces of information. They're taking a picture of the hazard, and they want to record that hazard for mitigation. So PCL ranks its hazards as A through D. There's a health and safety and environment operations guide that runs to 5,000 pages, or maybe 10. I don't know. It's ridiculous. It's, a giant binder. And we realized that if we could take a picture and identify the hazard in the picture and use ML to classify it automatically and predict what that hazard was, we save a ton of paperwork and we've actually recorded something of value very quickly and efficiently, saving the most valuable commodity on a job site, time. Without a doubt, time is the most valuable commodity. So we realized if people are using phones, taking pictures, let's apply ML and computer vision to identify the hazard and classify the hazard. So we've used natural language processing because when they speak into the phone, we capture that text, convert it to digital format, and NLP is using the classification algorithms to figure out what the hazard is and correctly classify it. We use some other science and voodoo black magic to identify what the hazard was. And I'll come into that shortly. So this is the only math I'm going to put up. And forgive me if I haven't captured it exactly. My data science guys put this stuff together. And we used the science you see up there to parse the text, classify the hazard. And then we used some other black magic on the video or the pictures to identify the hazard, which I'll also speak about coming up 
when I move into our concrete activity. So I have a video uh, from the Tanyu project in Mississauga. It's a high-end uh, condominium project that PCL is currently constructing. And we're going to see some field people talk about the value of this to construction. And my clicker needs a click. Really? Okay. Sorry, guys. Build smarter. With its HSE hazard inspection app, inspection is just one area that PCL is modernizing with technology and innovation. And I jumped ahead of the video. Let me start this again. That is able to identify where we have inadequacies or hazards. The machine learning will help us classify the risk, the hazard standard, and the category automatically without us having to manually go through a list or think about it. Therefore, people can do inspections on the spot. The hazard inspection app takes that untapped data and turns it into fast and accurate hazard classification, which enables our skilled inspectors to be even more accurate and consistent in ensuring the safety of our job sites and workers. The inspectors identify the hazard, take a picture, and upload it to the HSE database in the cloud which stores and organizes the data. The app uses computer vision and machine learning, quickly analyzing the hazard and classifying it according to PCL's HSEOP guidelines. What I like about the app is that you're able to take a photo in real time, it tells you where you are, you're able to provide a description, the voice to text is a really good feature that speeds it up, and ultimately allows me to enter an inspection uh, quicker and spend more time in the field. With Jaden and the, the touchdown on our paperwork, it allows us a streamline, it gets right into our master data hub. It allows so many things to move so much more efficiently and notifications work extremely well. But the app isn't just about increasing efficiency, it's about increasing safety for PCL workers. It's a key part of PCL's zero incident policy and it is fundamental to how we do business. It's not about being predictive, but it's about preventing the likelihood of reoccurrence so that we don't have those same incidents over and over, or hazards over and over. PCL has industry-leading safety rates, and this app will only help us improve. This app is another example of PCL's focus on innovation and technology across our operation. I'm very proud of PCL and the HSC department in utilizing innovation to get the best we can to help our people go home every day. Apologies on my fumbling with PowerPoint. I actually had that working, um, but I think you get the point on the latter half of that video. Uh, the Vice President of Health and Safety there, Jim Berry, made an interesting comment. It's not about prediction. And I'm going to touch on that because that's what ML does. It predicts things, or it's one of the things that it does. Um, our health and safety uh, key statistics total recordable incident rate, lost time frequency rate, the lowest in the industry. And it is a PCL policy that safety is job one. It's the most important thing. And we take it seriously, and the application of AI and ML, such as the hazard inspection app, contributes to the safety record. So I'm gonna pose a question. Um, you heard our VP say it's not about prediction. And in fact, um, we can, we're good at this with our ML. I can, our, our algorithms very much can detect uh, PP and E violations if somebody isn't wearing protective gear as they should be. The question becomes, can we predict accidents and incidents this, on, a, on an actual construction project? Who thinks here that that's possible? The ability to predict. Ah, I gotta get you talking to my VP of health and safety. Um, Jim's position on health and safety prediction is that it's a chicken and egg thing. If I predicted it and it's going to happen, I still haven't solved the problem of a worker becoming injured. The corollary to that is if I can predict it, I can have conversations about it 
Safety is behavior-based. It's all about behavior, and you want to influence safe behaviors. And if the data can help drive those discussions, all the better. What I'm showing you here is, you'll recall previously, that company called SmartVid. They ran a proof of concept with a US general contractor that actually predicts incidents on job sites with startling accuracy. 89% uh, of, of incidents were predicted accurately, and you see the false positives and the false negatives there. Expanding on this graph a little bit, you can see where the yellow and the red lines line up. That's the accuracy. That's the 81% or whatever it was. And SmartVid is very much pursuing this. One of the challenges to doing this activity that SmartVid faces is a lack of training data. You'll recall earlier I said organizations are loath to give up their data for purposes such as this, particularly to a software company that's going to monetize it. Um, to, to that end, there is something known as the Construction Analytics Council, to which various GCs belong and do in fact contribute data for the purposes of training ML models. And many general contractors belong. PCL as of yet does not. But I, I really believe personally that health and safety and incidents can be predicted and predicted accurately, and not just from visual photos. Schedule plays an impact, weather plays an impact. Uh, if a job's behind schedule, ironically, it's also typically unsafe. That's anecdotal, I can't prove that. But you talk to people in the field and there's anecdotal evidence to support that. The next one I'm gonna talk about is concrete pour optimization. This again is the use of video analytics um, to optimize cycle times of concrete trucks arriving on a job site, releasing the load, and moving on. An idle concrete truck is expensive, very expensive. Lost productivity, uh, people standing around not pouring concrete or laying concrete. And what we've done in this particular activity is we've applied computer vision using commodity cameras, job site cameras, security cameras, to ingest the video and detect the concrete truck, log the concrete truck when it arrives, when it departs, when it releases its material, um, because historically we've done this with, guess what, pen and paper. So time, again, is another motivation for this, as well as productivity. Idle concrete trucks cost a lot of money. So. Here's my next uh, foray into machine learning algorithms. What we did is we've trained the model with video capture and annotation. Um, we've applied distance heuristics to determine where a truck is and follow multiple trucks as they enter a job site. And of course, we used a convolutional neural network to identify the trucks. A Couple of interesting observations and learnings that I experienced. This is not the way to explain the magic to an executive when you're trying to get funding and validation of this. I actually thought it was effective. You know, we, we said it's kind of like a neuron. There's a bunch of math stuff that goes on and out the other end spits a picture of the concrete truck with a box drawn around it. And the executives look at that and they scratch their heads and they really wonder what's going on. So. The way I explained it, what you see and what the computer sees. Remember, our executives and many of the people in the industry are engineers, well-trained in mathematics, physics, et cetera, et cetera. But they need to see practical application of what this does. And you need to speak the language of business to sell this. Better schedule, better productivity, higher fees, less cost. They're not that interested in the math. Those of you in the room, of course, that do play in the data science world, it is of interest and it is very interesting. And it continues to amaze me, amaze me personally what people are doing with this technology. Okay, here we go, another risky video. Oh, pardon me, before I get to the video, the stuff that I'm a little better with, the descriptive analytics, we take the outputs from our machine learning models and feed it into Power BI. So what you see here is a bunch of statistics about the timing of concrete truck arrivals, the logging of it, how, if, you know, how long did a pour take? And from that, we inform our field staff uh, of, what, of the activities taking place on a pour 
so that they can hopefully optimize it. Uh, this might actually work. This is the Tanu project in Toronto where we first ran this and we've got the field folks, if the video cooperates, speaking to how we used it. This guy, Superintendent on the PCL Tanu project, we're using vision learning to optimize concrete cycle time. Yeah, so there's a couple of benefits. We're already using cameras that were already going to be in place for our state security, uh, so there's no real added cost that they're already in place. And so what we've got is three cameras pointed at our main point of access to pick up uh, truck numbers on the concrete truck as they enter the site. Uh, that's logged, and then uh, once they leave site again, that number is logged to create the amount of time uh, they are on site and record that data. I think the three biggest things that will work on the Tanya project for PCL overall is risk management, uh, schedule management, and time savings for PCL staff. It's usually, you know, we're ordering the concrete, we're making sure it's getting out here on time. We send out the sheets to the flagman, we have them record the trucks, the times the trucks arrive, and like you can see today, it's raining, and then those sheets get wet, you lose that paperwork. When you have cameras there, it's going to save that paperwork from getting destroyed. We have real, real-time data. By not physically standing there doing this work with a clipboard like we used to do, that'll allow the person to be doing something else in the building, whether it be safety-related, quality-related, uh, coordination. Uh, the opportunities, <laughs> we always need more time in our day, so being able to free up uh, four hours watching a concrete board is a big savings. By optimizing uh, four times, there's potential to uh, recognize when we can be most efficient, and, and, and with that information, kind of push a form worker maybe to pour a day or two early to save them cost savings uh, with the supply side uh, so that he's not pouring longer uh, duration pours, uh, freeing up his guys to do other things. It'll give us more transparency with the company. Hey, listen, we've had this many trucks. The spacing was incorrect for this many times. Um, where are those trucks? How do we get those trucks uh, spacing correct? Instead of me running up and down making those phone calls, we can show them the live data here. This, this is the issue. If I have a flag person on the gate, our site's a little different. We're downhill, right? So the truck's staged around the corner up on the hill. They can't see every time where the truck is and flag them in. Those cameras can spot that truck, tell us right exactly when they've actually come to site. Using this automation on site will help us because we've got a lead staff here. Uh, job to do in, in the district in our company. Uh, you know, numbers are tight. And uh, by freeing up uh, staff members to do other tasks, it allows us to run lean and, and be efficient on site. I don't want to have people standing up there at the forums Waiting for concrete to be poured, I'm wasting their time and we're wasting money. So it's a win-win. Save that money, get the concrete in faster and pour faster. Because that's what drives the job. The faster you get concrete up, the faster your building goes up. So there you hear it. That's what drives the job, the faster you get it done. And that's, that's really what we were focused on with that activity and the use of machine learning and computer vision. We, we also see it being highly applicable in other areas uh, that we have not yet investigated but uh, we're, we're, look, we're always looking for challenges that can be solved with that technology. Okay, I'm almost done. Job site insights, also available for sale. Uh, job site insights really got a start about a year, 18 months ago when a business development manager in our Toronto district was on a, I'll call it a smart buildings kick. A lot of his clients were asking for a smart building. And the question that naturally followed, what's a, what do you want? What's a smart building? And naturally, you got the shrugging shoulders. I, I think it was a hot topic. And I, I pulled the definition of insight out because it, the word that jumped out at me was intuitive. It's anything but intuitive. It's based on data. It's based on fact. There is no intuition. Uh, we, we collect raw IoT data uh, to optimize operations on our job site. So, again, we realized smart buildings were not the way to go. We can certainly build a smart building, but an owner can provision a smart building as well. PCL can help with that. We backed the train up and said, let's build smarter. Let's do smart construction while we're erecting that structure, if it's a building, for example. And then when we're done, we also leave the infrastructure behind to further provision and make available technologies that make the building smart. So what have we done? We put deploy IoT sensors. That is a sensing device that's connected to a network and can send data to a central repository. We then apply analytics that could be descriptive analytics to obtain insights. 
And then we action those insights real time. We're proactive about it. And as I'll show you, that really contributes to reductions in costs, the elimination of rework, which is really expensive in construction. Construction companies lose fee with rework. We improve schedule and we enable lean operations, particularly in energy management. So PCL's green initiatives, our sustainability initiatives, are directly supported with this application. So there's a, there's a pictorial or a visual of what it does, and we particularly pick up, this began with temperature and humidity. And why is that important? A, a humid room on a building under construction can deform millwork, and the millwork has to be redone. There's the rework. We leave heaters on unnecessarily, allowing a room to get too hot. Well, if we can get in front of that and watch and alert to conditions that are unfavorable to construction, we save money, we save fee. So what we've done is we've built a data ingestion platform that takes that IoT data, moves it up to that proverbial cloud, and then we make it actionable. And we call that job site insights, and the industry refers to it as a digital twin. In fact, it's built on Microsoft Azure's digital twin platform, which used to be called Smart Spaces because I think they also realized that everybody's doing smart buildings, but nobody's doing digital twins. That's my supposition anyways. So there's our current stats on, on our digital twin known as Jobsite Insights. So we have now deployed on 35 or 36 active projects now. You can see the stats up there. Um, and we, we're capturing half a million IoT events per day. It's a lot of data coming in on our pipe and going to the cloud. And the technologies behind Digital Twin, various Azure streaming technologies, allow us to capture IoT data, which is very binary in nature. It's a temperature, it's a reading, it's a yes, it's a no. There's not a lot of sophistication to that data. And here's my sales pitch again. It's of four construction sites, without a doubt. So we have sold this technology to competitors. We've sold it to the food processing industry where temperature and first events don't take place. On a recent project in Edmonton, there's the numbers. So across a number of areas, the reduction in energy savings was significant. Heaters and electrical equipment not left on unnecessarily. So we've got non-invasive power meters that can measure electrical consumption non-invasively, report it back to JSI, and you know, my mom always said, turn the damn lights out. And that's really what we're doing is turning the lights out. Rework avoidance, the big one is flood detection. So we've recently incorporated flood detection sensors into the JSI platform, and floods are more expensive insurance-wise than fire, and particularly expensive in construction. So we can reduce our underwriting costs and reduce our insurance costs. I think the big thing there in this day and age, of course, is you know, we're mitigating energy consumption and carbon footprints, and we're always concerned about that. And the investment for what we spent, we're seeing a 10x return on a single project, which, as I said earlier, that gets executive attention, not that funny looking neuron. One more video, and then I'm almost done. This is a job site. A little bit of self promotion here. This was done with Microsoft. We were promoting the technologies jointly with Microsoft through our partnerships.
so we go to the start building. We've relied on technology to implement our construction planning from virtual reality, 4D scheduling, and Halloween technology. A smart building is a win-win for the owner, the operator, and the tenant. You're putting in core infrastructure to make it flexible enough in the future. PCO created Job Space Insights, an IoT-based smart construction platform based off of Microsoft Azure, IoT spatial intelligence, and Azure Maps technologies. It starts with instrumenting a job site with various IoT sensors, and then streaming that data in real time through the lifetime of the project. The platform actually gives us the runoff off of the building. They show red areas, which will drive us to build that area and find out what the problem is. And the building inside is a little line on a job site inspection platform. It monitors the temperatures, humidity, and pressure in 480 minutes. That's something that would normally be done at this building. Our cloud-based information is more readily available. It facilitates collaboration. So we can have all interested parties with the right information at the right time. By gathering data from sensors instead of people, we can focus those people on more effective and efficient things that bring job impact to our owner. PCL spends 200 to 300 million dollars a year on energy. With job site insights, we anticipate 15 to 20 percent savings just in fuel and electricity costs. There's a significant opportunity to change the face of construction for the digital technology needs. Without the cloud, we would not have been able to do the things that we're doing today. As we continue to drive along the digital journey, Microsoft's going to be a critical partner for us in our evolution. It's all a shameless Microsoft video, but nonetheless, it really brings forth what we're doing with that platform. For me, as a data person, that's my background, the value isn't just from the IoT data, it's combining that with schedule data, planning data, quality data, health and safety data, and then applying ML and AI on top of all of that. And, and that's where we foresee the real value coming from IoT and from job site insights, uh, as, as do some of our competitors, uh, as do some of the people, or the clients rather, that we provision that software to. Okay, almost done, folks, um, and respectful of time. I wanna talk about what I think for PCL is extremely important, and that's the concept of partnerships. Um, and as you can see, we, we can't build everything. We need the expertise. We can't own everything because it's costly to develop these things. Uh, speed to market is important. Our competition is moving quickly. Other construction companies are certainly adopting these technologies or trialing these technologies. Our customers demand more and more, but we always have to balance that with technology's focus has to be core construction. We can never lose sight of that. And that's why we have an ab abundance of importance on partnerships with technology companies that can help us do the things that you've seen here today. I wanna call out a couple in particular this is our, what I call our JSI ecosystem and reflects some of the partnerships we've already signed for which we have sharing of intellectual property rights which we sh for which we also have revenue sharing agreements should we, should we capitalize and monetize some of these technologies. So Jobsite Insights in the middle there is the technology platform. We're establishing partnerships with sensor vendors, with digital twin vendors, with building analytics technologies I'll talk about briefly. And I want to call out two in particular. MC Things is based in Cochrane, Alberta, just to the west of us. They build IoT sensors. And we partnered with them early on. They're a startup. Without a doubt, they are a startup. And they've been a tremendous partner of PCLs for the IoT platform. They provision our temperature and humidity sensors. And they're continually working on technologies that supplement and provide what we're looking for in sensor technologies. Alta ML, I really want to talk about those. Who knows Alta ML in the room? Big, big partner of my department. Uh, we've signed a formal partnership with Alta ML for revenue sharing of intellectual capital should they develop it. We have right of first refusal if they take the technology to other industries. And the two ML cases that I presented today were built in concert with Alta ML. I quickly realized, and no offense to anybody in this room, hiring data scientists is tough business. I did attempt hiring one, and I quickly realized Although the individual was brilliant, I mean brilliant, the application of the AI and ML to practical problems was a challenge for him. And we quickly realized that I can't source AI and ML skills, it's difficult, so I'm gonna go to the market. And Alta ML has been a phenomenal partner in our AI and ML initiatives. Corey Jansen, who heads that firm, has just been wonderful to work with. 
Um, and as I said, local, they're Alberta companies and PCL likes to do business with local Alberta companies that fit our technology profile, that provide the innovation and, and provide the cost effectiveness that we're looking for. Of mention up there is Copper Tree Analytics. Anybody heard of Copper Tree? Yeah, they're out of Vancouver. They do, um, I'll call it building analytics. I think their tagline is, your building is talking to you, are you listening? So they specialize in automated fault detection and diagnostics. They listen to what your BMS systems are giving off and they can optimize the operation of a, of a building. They also now have an energy management solution which shows you what you're consuming, electricity, gas, any costs that are related to the infrastructure of the building. We think we can tie that into JSI and leave a platform behind after a building's constructed to give you that smart building. And there's our partnership with Altair now. That's my boss uh, when they signed the deal. Um, and I, I inserted the graphic there is that smart construction with JSI is going to rely on technology partnerships. And we're always looking for business opportunities with our partners. And as I said for the last time, our, our commercialization of JSI is really dependent on partnerships. 